As believers, we can live victoriously over the flesh, the world and the devil. This series is intended to show us how to live the overcoming victorious Christian life. In part 4, we learn that walking in the spirit is an important key to living the overcoming life. We learn what this means and how to do this practically and how we can tell if we are indeed walking filled with the spirit. This morning Sandhya Raj will uh, from East Church again she will lead us in our time of declaration then I'll come and minister the word. Thank you pastor. Good morning church and a warm welcome to everyone who's watching us online. Um today I've taken the liberty to even give a title to my declaration message it's called the uh, break the metaphors. Um many times when we read uh, the word of God it uh, speaks to us in metaphors. It's comparing God Uh, to something his love to something um, or it's just not direct and it's ironic that um, our worship team first song today was jesus is my rock um, it's it's very uh, difficult to understand or um, relate to what the word of god says sometimes and um, is it for me is a question that we are often left with and how do you claim the promises that are there in the word of god as yours right Let's take an example of um, if you all have your bibles with you can you please um, turn to Romans 8:38 um this is a verse that uh, that's very common a lot of us know this verse um give you some time to turn to it yeah speaking of uh, love of god that is in jesus christ um paul's writing to the romans that he's absolutely convinced that uh, neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor present nor future nor height nor death depth nor anything else will be able to separate us from the love of god what is death what is life where are the angels where are the demons where is the present where is the future what height or what is the depth that god's love is right this is a classic metaphor that's there but the beauty of the word of god is God uh, understands each and every one of us like we were just one person that he's catering to and it's up to us to find it within the word of God um I just read verse 38 if we move just three verses ahead uh, sorry before 38 we go to verse 35 very clearly it writes who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall trouble hardship persecution famine nakedness danger or sword all these are very relatable right and can we name one life situation that's not listed here and can now can we now compare what has been said in verse 35 to verse 38 it absolutely speaks basically summing up our entire lives and every struggle that we go through i just want to uh, say one thing that um, i guess god has given us everything that we need and i also think that we just have to read a few verses above or below um our usual wall hangings or the good morning forward messages that we get so that we will claim everything god has in store for us and boldly take over everything that's already is ours so let's boldly stand up um declare and say out loud and claim everything that's already ours this is god's word this is god speaking to me I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing. to many people i receive his word i believe his word and i live by his word christ is my master and to him i am in absolute surrender i walk in the more glorious covenant with god i live the more glorious life in the spirit I manifest the more glorious ministry of the spirit in Jesus name 
Amen. All right. Last Sunday was uh, our supernatural Sunday for the month of January, and we had uh, lots of testimonies that have come in. Do you like testimonies? You know, uh, and uh, there were several testimonies that were actually posted online during the service. While the service was happening, while the prayer was going on, uh, we have people, you know, watching us live. And uh, uh, I'm just going to mention four of them. I, I'm sh there were more than that. Uh, so uh, I'll just, without mentioning the names, just quickly run through this. Some came by email and then some by video. So I'll just, we'll just share them with you quickly before we get into the word. Uh, one person, this was on the live, four, four of these were all on the live service. Amen. Felt the presence of God, felt an inner healing. Uh, I believe I'm healed. Another person put this on the chat. My neck was stiff and was hurting since yesterday. It's loose now. The pain disappeared. Thank you, Jesus. Another person put, my knees were paining for the past two months. Today, I felt the pain was leaving from my knee. Praise God for that. Another person wrote, my right knee were paining for past two weeks. I feel Jesus Christ has touched me, and I feel more comfortable. Praise God and all glory to him. And all this was on the live chat. Remember, while the word of knowledge was being called out, these things were happening. Now, there are several emails that came. Uh, one, uh, I'll just quickly mention this. This came on February 1st. I was suffering from severe leg pain for four days. I was having difficulty walking. Uh, and uh, during the service, Pastor Nancy prayed for people having leg pain. I received that word with faith. Um, then she, so this is the next day. When I got up this morning, the pain was completely gone. I'm able to walk. Um, this came in on the 3rd of February. I was suffering from itchiness for almost two years from a fungal infection on a side as a side effect of medication I was taking, uh, the itch itchiness continued even after I stopped the medication. Now, this person was watching from Canada, right? And here, uh, Pastor Nancy, she says, I was, I was surprised and did not expect to hear Pastor Nancy pray for the release of itchiness from the body. I prayed for healing. Today, I want to testify that I'm completely healed. Two years, completely healed. Uh, and this came out on February 5th. Uh, this person said, I have pain. I had pain in my right leg near the knee. Uh, I, I don't even remember for how long. It was like a sharp, uh, um, sharp kind of a pain. And uh, so while Pastor Nancy was declaring healing for the right leg, uh, she agreed. And, and she just, uh, you know, she, uh, uh, she was actually praying for healing for others. And then when Pastor Jakes was testifying what happened to him, then she checked her knee and several times, and she realized the pain was completely gone. Amen? Let's give God praise for all of these. And we have one video testimony, so if you could play that, we'll quickly have a look, uh, and then we'll get into God's word, please. Grandma had been having this problem from a long time below the knee. It was uh, hurting a lot, and she was not able to get up uh, properly. It, it was prayer time, and then I just prayed for grandma to get okay. And then um, another pastor told that uh, pain below the right leg would be healed. And then just after the service, uh, I called grandma, and she was healed. <laughs> she's able to move her hand without any pain or without any difficulty. See, she's able to do it like this now. She's able to completely do it like this. Grandma has arthritis, so she gets stuck like this. Amazing, amazing. But Kal hai the auntie, Kal Kal. See, auntie, like she's able to, because she used to walk. See, grandma's able to walk, because before grandma used to walk like this, like, you know, with this, she keep her hand in the leg. So she's able to walk. Amen. Amen. So, just wonderful, you know, just to see these testimonies coming in. And, uh, you know, the Lord Jesus told us greater things, greater works. So what we should do is, Lord, we want to see bigger things, right? Thank God for these miracles. Thank, for, thank God for these testimonies that are happening. We say, God, we want to see the blind eyes open, the deaf hear. We want to see the lame walk. We want to see cancers heal. We want to see people with incurable diseases whom hospitals and doctors have given up healed. And we want them to come and testify. Amen. Right, so we're like we're like at, at uh, kindergarten stage still, <laughs> but we're journeying somewhere, amen. And we want to see those things, and the Lord is more than ready to do it. And I'm sure we're going to have those uh, amazing testimonies. So thank God for all of these uh, testimonies that came in, and thank you each one of you who took time uh, to share them with us. All right, so we're going to get into God's word 
together this morning. We've been uh, talking about overcoming uh, over the last several Sundays. So we're going to continue this series through February and uh, through uh, a few Sundays in March. I want to quickly review what we have shared so far in talking about overcoming. Uh, in our first message, part one, we established the fact that every believer can live an overcoming life. God has designed you to live as an overcomer. The Bible tells us, and we saw this from First John, I'm just reviewing quickly, First John chapter 5, verse 1 and verse 4, the Bible says, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So you're born again, that means you are born of God. And what about you? It says, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So you are an overcomer. You overcome the world and everything that is in it. You're, a, you're an overcomer. So God has destined or God has ordained uh, each of us as believers uh, to be overcomers. The question that we are asked or we asked ourselves is, okay, how do we do that? How do we live that out practically? How do we live overcoming victorious lives over the flesh, the world, and the devil? And we saw in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, this is how you gain victory over the world. It's through your faith. So faith in God is involved for you and me to walk victorious, to live victorious over the world, over the flesh, the world, and the devil. In part two, we established that the basis for our overcoming lives is, first of all, the cross of Jesus. It's because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. So on the cross, Jesus destroyed, it just not only paid for sin, but he also destroyed the power of sin. He broke the power of sin on the cross. Uh, Romans 8 says he condemned, he rendered sin powerless. He condemned sin in the flesh. He rendered sin powerless. So you and I as believers, when we confront sin, we don't say, oh, I'm so weak towards sin. No. You look at sin and say, sin, you're a defeated enemy because Jesus destroyed your power on the cross. Jesus destroyed Satan on the cross. And Jesus redeemed you and me on the cross. The finished work of the cross is the basis for us. Secondly, we also said in part two of this message that our identity who we are in Christ, that we must learn to live out of that identity if you and I are going to live overcoming lives. So the cross of Jesus and identity uh, in Christ uh, form the basis for, our over, live, for us to live overcoming lives. In part three, uh, we talked about the word of God, that the word of God is of utmost importance. God has given us his word uh, 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 for us to live overcoming lives. God's word is so important in each of our lives. So I want to encourage you to read the Bible, uh, take time to meditate in it. And we mentioned these three things. You, you and I need to feed our inner person with the word of God. Uh, we need to renew our mind with the word of God. And we need to speak the word of God. The word of God is central to us our lives, if we are going to live overcoming victorious lives over the flesh, the world, and the devil. Today, in part four of this message, we're going to develop this further, and I want to talk to us about walking in the Spirit. All of us must learn to walk in the Spirit in order for us to live this overcoming victorious life, a life that is overcoming the flesh the world, and the devil. We've got to learn to walk in the Spirit. Now, this is just a fascinating uh, study in the Word of God. We could spend weeks on it, but we're going to condense it and make it concise in, in, in one sermon that will help you and me learn how to walk in the Spirit. Let's turn in our Bibles, please, to, look at, to read a few passages on this. I'm going to read from Romans chapter 8. Uh, we'll read verses 1 through 14 quickly. Uh, these passages uh, may not come on your screen, I'm not sure, but if you have your Bibles, uh, please follow with me uh, uh, in these passages. I'm just going to read them all, and then we will uh, draw insights from them. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 14. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law, or you can use the word, you can 
understand the word as law, as dominion, as influence. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. That means the Holy Spirit being in me, he sets me free from the dominion of sin and from the dominion of death. The presence of the Holy Spirit in your life and mine as born again believers, as believers who love Jesus, his presence in your life and mine sets us free from the law of sin, from the dominion of sin and the law of death, from anything that destroys, he sets us free. Verse 3, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Look at verse 3. Oh, Jesus condemned sin. The word condemned there literally means to destroy, to render powerless, make ineffective. Jesus made sin ineffective in his own body. He destroyed that for you and me. Verse 4. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh... Set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, that means if you are in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God dwells in you, then you are expected to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, not walk after the flesh. So he's saying, verse 9, you are, in, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Let's all say this together. I'm not in the flesh. I'm in the Spirit. I'm not in the flesh. I'm in the Spirit. Now that's how we live life. We don't live life by the flesh, we live life by the Spirit. So we're going to learn how to do that to this morning. He says, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. Verse 10. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Let's also turn to Galatians 5. I just want us to read all this passage scripture on this subject. And then we will uh, get into our insights. In Galatians 5, they're going to read verses 16 to 26. Galatians 5, verses 16 to 26. Like I said, we could spend many weeks on these passages. Uh, but we're going to read them. And then in a very, very quick way, we'll uh, condense key insights from these passages. Galatians 5, verses 16 to 26. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. That means you don't have to try to keep the law because when you're walking in the Spirit, you keep the law and more, is what he says. That's paraphrase, okay? Verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revel revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who are Christ's, that means those who belong to Jesus, have crucified the flesh. With its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk 
in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. One last passage on walking in the spirit is in Ephesians 5. So if you will please go with me to Ephesians 5 and just read a few verses there. Verses 17 to 21. Ephesians 5, 17 to 21. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with the wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So what we've, what we've just done is we've read these three passages from um, the epistles. All are talking to us about walking in the spirit, living the spirit for life, and so on. You know, sometimes people get very confused uh, or, or they misunderstand what the spirit for life is all about. They think if you shout a few hallelujahs and say a little bit in tongues, oh, you're filled with the spirit. That is a very poor understanding of what walking in the spirit or living in the spirit or the spiritual life is all about because the passages we read today from Romans 8 from Galatians 5 and Ephesians 5 are, are are describing to us life in the spirit of walking in the spirit Paul uses different terms synonymously he talks about walk in the spirit live in the spirit be led by the spirit be filled with the spirit these are synonymous to the life the normal Christian life a life of a person who has the Holy Spirit in him or her and is living out of that, right? And he describes to us, and the, and the key thing that you will see repeated in Romans 8 and Galatians 5 is that when we live in the Spirit or walk in the Spirit, he says, you know, we will crucify the flesh. The flesh will be dead. We will not give in to the things of the flesh, so many of us as believers, we say, you know, how do I overcome these sins? And how do I overcome these temptations? Well, this is the answer. Walk in the Spirit. And you will give no place to the things of the flesh in your life and mine. That's, how, that's, that's why it's so important, walking in the Spirit. And we want to learn how to walk in the Spirit. So some key insights here just to begin with, uh, which we can uh, take from these passages. First of all, we are instructed and empowered to walk in the Spirit. So let's say this together. I am instructed and empowered to walk in the Spirit. So these passages tell us, you know, believer, you've got to walk in the Spirit. There's an instruction from God. But not just walk, but God empowers you. He says the Spirit of Christ is in you. So you're empowered to walk in the Spirit. And we also see that walking in the Spirit is key to overcoming the flesh that is sin, and death, things that destroy. We read that in Romans 8 verse 2. The law of the spirit of life sets us free from the law of sin and death. Sin sets us free from it. Things that is destroyed cause death. We're set free from it. If you and I will walk in the spirit. Another important insight we can uh, deduce is walking in the spirit is necessary to live a life pleasing to God. Because Paul wrote in Romans 8, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You can say your hallelujahs, and you can say whatever you want in tongues, but if you're living in the flesh, it's not pleasing God. Right? And the works of the flesh, he said in Galatians 5, that all this envy and jealousy and boasting and contention and strife and all of that, that's the flesh. So if I'm singing, if I'm, I can, you know, I can do all these so-called things of the spirit, but if I'm doing the things of the flesh, it's not pleasing God. So I need to walk in the spirit in order to please God. And then we also said, walking in the Spirit leads to life, peace, and righteousness. Romans 8 verse 6. It says, if you walk in the Spirit, it leads to life, peace, and righteousness. So walking in the Spirit is so important for all of us. So today's sermon, we're going to just answer three questions. So all of this was the introduction. The other message, three questions. What does it mean to walk in the Spirit? That's the first question we want to answer. What does it mean to walk in the Spirit? Second question, how do I do this practically? Now, how can I do this out? How can you and I walk in the Spirit in everyday Christian life? 
And how do I know if I'm walking in the Spirit? We're just going to answer these three questions. So, what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? And, and Paul uses language like this, you know, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. So, there's, uh, there's a little picture there. Being drunk with wine as opposed to being filled or drunk or under the influence of the Holy Spirit. He uses language like live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit. So what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? What does it mean to live that life? If I were to you know, put it in a sentence, I would say it like this. To walk in the Spirit is to walk yielded to, under the influence of, in submission to, under the direction of, and by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And much is on the screen? Yeah. Okay. Let's say it together. What does it mean to walk in the Spirit? It is to walk yielded to, under the influence of, in submission to, under the direction of, and by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. So if I live my life consistently like this, then I'm walking in the Spirit, right? So ask three young men to help me. Please come up, uh, uh, Roshan and, and uh, Sushil. And so let's illustrate this. You know, how do we walk in the Spirit practically? All right? So uh, Sushil Abraham is the Holy Spirit. Imagine, right? And he's living in me, but for practical purposes, he has to be outside. <laughs> All right. And uh, so I'm under the influence of the Holy, Holy Spirit. All right. I'm, I'm a believer. The Holy Spirit is in me. So she is the Holy Spirit. Now, as I'm going about my life, right, I face temptation. The desires of my flesh pull at me. Right. So this is the flesh are pulling at me. And Satan takes advantage of that. He presents temptations along that line. Right? So I'm struggling with it. Now the Holy Spirit is telling me, Ashish, go that way. Go that way. Right? But instead of yielding to, yielding to the influence and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I go this way. I'm walking in the flesh. And so walking in the Spirit. As we journey through life, my uh, dear friend, Joshua Matthew is there. The Holy Spirit is in me. But one sudden, one day, this is my friend, he upsets me. Right? He, he does all kinds of things to irritate me. It, oh man, he gets on my nerves. And my flesh gets irritated. You know, I, I just, this, this, is, this thing called anger, you know, all of us have it. <laughs> and it just kind of wells up in me. Now, at that moment, I, I know I'm supposed to pray. The Holy Spirit saying, hey, be a peacemaker. Walk away from it. Hey, don't, don't get involved. Just, just love him. But, but my flesh is angry. And I go, you know? <laughs> Now, that is walking in the flesh. I'm walking in the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit's in me. Now, maybe, you know, we're journeying in life and I face a storm. You know, some tumultuous situation, unexpected thing. The boss gets angry with me or my teacher in school gets upset, whatever. You know, some tumultuous thing happens. A storm is raging in life. You know, and then the Holy Spirit is speaking. Because He speaks. You know, and the storm and I'm just getting agitated. But inside me, the Holy Spirit is saying, Ashish. The Lord on high is mightier than the waves of the sea. Right? The Holy Spirit is saying, Ashish, the Lord will keep him in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Or he says, be anxious for nothing. In everything, to prayer and supplication, make a request to God. But the storm is so big, I get agitated. I get disturbed. I, I, instead, of, instead of drawing from the peace of the Holy Spirit, I'm just all agitated. I'm walking in the flesh, not in the Spirit. But let's try it again. <laughs> How, what is it? What will it look like if I'm walking in the Spirit? The Holy Spirit is in me. 
right? I'm a believer. He's always in me. And again, these temptations of the flesh pull at me. But there's desires for evil things and, and Satan is tempting and all kinds of things. And I'm, and I'm facing this and I pray. I say, Holy Spirit, please help me. Holy Spirit, help me. And the Holy Spirit says, yes, Ashish, come this way. Come this way. And I'm walking in the Spirit. I don't yield to the desires of the flesh. And I meet my friend Joshua Matthew once again. And the same thing, it's day two and he's still irritating me. He's still doing all those things that, you know, my flesh is angry. I want to punch him double. You know, Jesus had turned your cheeks. I want to make him turn both cheeks, you know. And, and I'm so angry. And, and, and then the Holy Spirit inside me is ashes. I will strengthen you. Be a peacemaker. Walk in love. So instead of retaliating, I just walk in peace. Walk away from it. And my relationship with him is not affected. Because I'm walking in the spirit and it always leads, it always results in righteousness, peace and joy. Life and righteousness. And as I journey through life, I once again come to those tumultuous situations. They keep coming, those tribulations. Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulations. And so the storms of life keep raging and and, and then I'm faced with all these things. They affect my mind, they're, they're call, trying to cause all that havoc. But the Holy Spirit inside me is speaking. And he says, Ashish, the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. God will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on him. Don't be anxious for anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, make a request known to God. So in the middle of that storm, the Holy Spirit is empowering me to have perfect peace. Peace that passes all understanding. And I can journey through the storm with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's walking in the spirit. Let's put our hands together. Thank you, guys. All right. So, so the Bible tells us, walk in the spirit. It means that regardless of what I'm facing in my body, in my mind, or in my circumstances, I walk yielded to, under the direction, under the influence, under the guidance, and under the empowerment. Powering of the Holy Spirit. That's walking in the Spirit. You understand that? And the Bible is telling us, or telling all of us, that's how, that's the normal Christian life. A life where you and I walk in the Spirit. Where we walk yielded to the Holy Spirit. So, how do we walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, or be filled by the Spirit? How do we do this practically? And I just want to just share some practical things uh, that, that I do in my life. And which I think uh, will just help you, help all of us learn how to walk in the Spirit. What do you do? First of all, we want to stay filled. So everybody say, stay filled. Stay filled. Now Paul wrote in Ephesians 5.18, be filled with the Spirit. There's a continuous tense there. Be constantly, continuously filled with the Spirit. So yesterday, I may have been filled with the Spirit. had a wonderful walk in the Spirit. Today, I still need to be filled with the Spirit. Now it doesn't mean the Holy Spirit goes away. It's not. Holy Spirit is there. But... I may have become more conscious or I may have given more uh, importance to the things of the flesh, things that are affecting me. So I need to pull myself back into that place where I am filled, that means fully under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And it is as simple as you and I just praying and saying, Holy Spirit, fill me today. Take a moment every day. In the morning, any time during the day. It's the Holy Spirit Fill me. In those moments when temptations are pulling at you, Holy Spirit, fill me. Because the things of this world, the things of the flesh, or the, the things the devil is throwing at you may seem more bigger. But you say, Holy Spirit, fill me. I want to be filled with the Spirit. So just stay filled. Keep yourself in that place under his influence. Number two, think about and pursue 
what pleases the Holy Spirit. So pull your thoughts away on things that please the Holy Spirit. Because in Romans 8 verse 5, he read, uh, those who live according to the Spirit, they set their mind on the things of the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh, they set their mind on the things of the flesh. Those who live according to the Spirit, they set their mind on the things of the Spirit. So how can I live in the Spirit? Set your mind, your thoughts, your affections on the Spirit. And I like to read this uh, from different versions. The Passion Translation says, those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual Realities. Contemporary English version says everyone who's ruled by the Holy Spirit thinks about spiritual things. The easy to read version says those who live following the Holy Spirit, following the Spirit are thinking about what the Spirit wants them to do. So, how can I live in the Spirit? Be spiritually minded. That is, have your motivations, inclinations, purposes, affections on the things of God. You pursue the purpose, the will, and the pleasure of the Holy Spirit. You say, Pastor, tomorrow I have to get up and I have to work. And I have to talk to all these people in my organization. They don't care whether I walk in the Spirit or walk in the flesh. They want the job done. I understand. I've been there. <laughs> but in the middle of all of that, you and I can intentionally think about the things of God. God, I'm doing this for you. God, uh, this meeting I'm going to, I just pray that, you know, uh, it, it may be a business meeting, a sales meeting, whatever. Lord, I just pray that Jesus will be seen in me. Oh, Lord, I know I'm going to meet this person. He's, he's very, very aggressive. Uh, he's very manipulative. But, Lord, help me to love him. What are you doing? You're pursuing what pleases the Holy Spirit. You're thinking spiritual. You're being spiritually minded in the mundane day-to-day harsh realities of life. You're still being spiritually minded. Are you with me? Those who have understanding, please say yes. <laughs> so think about spiritual things. Even in the day-to-day -day things of life. God be glorified. That's very spiritual. God help me to, you know, love that person. God help me to uh, show Jesus to that person. That's being spiritual. You're pursuing what pleases uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, what is His will? You're pursuing that. In the day-to-day -day things of it, those who, are, who are, those who are in the Spirit, their mind, they set their mind on the things of the Spirit. And so don't tolerate anything that might grieve or displease the Holy Spirit. Don't quench Him. Don't resist Him. Those things you avoid. A dirty thought goes through your mind. Stop it. No. This is not pleasing the Holy Spirit. Out. You're not going to let those things stay in your mind. Because those who walk in the flesh, they focus on the things of the flesh. You're walking in the spirit. You are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Because the spirit of God dwells in you. Thirdly, ask the Holy Spirit for help. So, you know, when your flesh is pulling at you, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me. Ask him for help. He's there in you to be your helper. He's there in you to be your comforter. He's there in you to be your guide. So ask him to help you. Holy Spirit. It's as simple as praying a simple prayer. Holy Spirit, please help me. I'm finding it difficult to love. I'm finding it difficult to be patient. I'm finding it, you know, uh, uh, difficult uh, in, this, in the middle of this storm. I, I, I feel like giving up. Whatever it is, you tell him. He knows it already, but he wants you to ask him to help you. And he is in you to be your helper. It's a simple prayer. Holy Spirit, please help me in this. And he'll come to strengthen you. The Bible tells us, and we did not read this verse in Romans 8, 26. It says, the Spirit himself helps us in our weaknesses. So he's there to help you in your weakness, in my weakness. The Spirit himself helps us in our weaknesses. But you need to ask him, Holy Spirit, help me. I'm feeling weak. I need your help. And he'll help you in your weaknesses. He will empower you uh, in that moment. And if you make a mistake, and we all do, just quickly say, God, I'm sorry. You know, and I make mistakes too. I remember Thursday evening was, oh, I felt so bad because one of our guys, one of our guys in our media team, we, we had to release something on Thursday evening. 
And so there's a little bit of, you know, high pressure. And um, he did something wrong. And I called him and I spoke to him pretty intense. Now, some of you who work with me, you know, sometimes I can be intense. <laughs> so I spoke I pretty intense. I said, you know, how come you did this, you know? And there was so much pressure because we had to release these things um, by Thursday evening. And I, I finished the call, then I went and I was looking at those things. And, and I realized, oh, this is why he made the mistake. And I was feeling so bad. Oh. First thing, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. I should not have spoken like that. Oh, I'm sorry, Holy Spirit. See, I made a mistake, but I need to tell Holy Spirit sorry. I want to stay under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Next thing, I called him back. I said, hey, uh, I looked at it and I realized why you made the mistake. I understand now. It's not your fault. So I'm sorry for talking to you very sternly. I apologize because I did something wrong. And, you know, he's doing a great job. He's a great guy. So he did it and then we really released everything. Wonderful happen. But the point I want to say is this, you know, we all make mistakes. But when you make a mistake, tell the Holy Spirit you're sorry and get it right with the people in case you've, you know, hurt somebody or offended somebody. Get it right and say, I'm sorry. And uh, hopefully he's forgiven me. It's okay. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, so ask the Holy Spirit for help. Ask the Holy Spirit. For help. We all make mistakes. Number four, uh, speak the word. How do, I, how do I do this practically? I need to speak the word. You know, we know in Ephesians 6, 17, that the sword of the Spirit is the word of God, the sword of the Spirit. So I have to use the sword, but when I use the sword, then the Holy Spirit goes in. How do I use the sword? i got to speak the word. So how do we walk in the Spirit practically? Four simple things. Four simple things. One, stay filled. Holy Spirit, Fill me. You're saying, I'm putting myself under your influence. I'm putting myself under your direction. I'm putting myself under your empowering. So stay filled. Ask him to fill you. Secondly, think about and pursue what pleases God. Keep, be spiritually minded. Think about spiritual, the spiritual things in every situation of life. Number three, ask the Holy Spirit for help. Holy Spirit, help me. We need it. So instead of letting the situation override you, the Holy Spirit empowers you. Number four, speak the word. Say what the word says in that situation. It's important. Because when you speak the word, the Holy Spirit makes the word effective in that situation. Speak, your, speak the word over your, your body. If, if your flesh is pulling against something, speak the word. Say, no, I refuse that in my life. If there are things, people are causing things to say, no. I refuse to retaliate. I choose to walk in love. The love of God is poured abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Speak the word. If the circumstances, the situations coming against you, speak the word. Say what the word says in that situation. Are you with me so far? All right, four simple things. Let's go over it again. I'm going over it again and again because I want you to get it. Number one, stay filled. Stay filled. Number two, think on spiritual things. Be spiritually minded. Number three, ask the Holy Spirit for help. Number four, speak the word. Simple way to stay, to walk in the spirit, to walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now very quickly, I want to close here. How can I say that I'm, how can I know if I'm walking in the spirit? What will be the evidence of that? Paul tells us this. Number one, we will manifest the fruit of the spirit. Instead of the works of the flesh, that is envy, jealousy, pride, uh, all of those things, contentions and strife. Instead of those things, our life would be full of love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, self-control, and faith. That's what we will demonstrate. And you can tell if you're walking in the Spirit or not. What's coming out of your life? Are you getting in strife with everybody around you? Are you fighting with people on social media? On Instagram. You know, nowadays we have different ways to fight with people. <laughs> Are you, you know, causing strife? Are you promoting whatever? You know, contention and division. 
if that's what's coming out of your life, it's not the Holy Spirit. But I'm an anointed person. Yeah, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness. Very simple test. Number two, I will edify others. Paul said, Ephesians 5.19, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Now, what does it mean, speaking? I'm doing something. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs are inspired words that come from the Holy Spirit. That means I'm doing things, I'm, I'm doing things that edify, that build others up. That's the point. So if I'm filled with the Spirit, I'll be building people up around me, bringing the best out of them, encouraging them, edifying them. Number three, I will be in a place of communion with the Lord. Same verse, Ephesians 5.19. He says, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Talking about a place of beautiful communion with God. You can tell that you're in the spirit if you're in that place of wonderful communion with God. And lastly, number four, we will walk with humility. Ephesians 5.21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. That means you can be 55 years old. Somebody comes to you who's 25. You submit. Say, but I'm older. You are older, of course. No one's questioning your age. But the Bible says we submit to one another. All of us submit to one another in the fear of God. And that's an expression of the spiritual life. So how can you tell you're walking in the Spirit, you're living in the Spirit, or you're being led by the Spirit? Four things Paul points out to us. First, he says, we will manifest the fruit of the Spirit. That will be what's coming out of your life. Secondly, you'll be edifying people around you. Third, you will be in a place of communion with God. And fourth, you'll be walking with humility and submission. Amen? So, if we do this, if we walk in the Spirit, Paul says, we will conquer the flesh. We will overcome the law of sin and death. Things that are in the world, that destroy. You'll be victorious. And that's available for all of us as believers. So, live in the Spirit. He is the source of your life. You're empowered by him. Walk in the spirit. You walk in step with him. Let, you're led by the spirit. You walk guided by him. You're filled with the spirit. You walk influenced and yielded to him. Amen. Worship team, please come up. So I want to invite all of us as believers. This is the way we're supposed to live. Walk in the spirit. Now, for some of us, this might have been the first time you heard a message like this, walk in the Spirit. Take time to go back, listen to the sermon again. If you have to listen to it five times, do it. The sermon notes, study it. Because you and I, we need to understand how to walk in the Spirit. So many believers try to take the easy way out. Pastor, lay your hands on me. I want to overcome temptation. That's not the way you overcome temptation. Pastor, pray for me. I'm addicted. Well, the Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I can pray for you as much as I can, but you'll still be defeated because the key to overcoming your flesh is not in my hands. The key to overcoming your flesh is in your hands. You have to walk in the spirit. I can't walk in the spirit for you. Very simple. You have to walk in the spirit. And you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Amen? But the beautiful thing is all of us can. Because the spirit of Christ is in you. Amen? We can pray for you. Break any uh, oppression. We can break bondages. We can break the yokes. We can remove burdens by the anointing. But overcoming your flesh 
is something you have to do by walking in the Spirit. And we shared with you how to do that. And I believe all of us can. And we can manifest the fruit of the Spirit and have no place for the works of the flesh in our lives. Let's rise to our feet, please. I call our pastors also to join us, Vinny and um, Before we just go into time of ministry and prayer, I want to just remind us, and this is for those who may not have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Maybe you're in the auditorium this morning. Maybe you're watching online and uh, you say, well, I really don't know if I'm saved, if I have Jesus in me, if I'm born again, uh, if I have the Holy Spirit in me. I'm not sure. I don't know. I want to just share this few, few things with you and then lead you in a prayer. See, the Bible has good news for all of us that we can all be saved. We need to, A, we need to acknowledge our sin and our need for a Savior. Yes, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. B, we need to believe in who Jesus is and what he's done for us on the cross and who he is today. We need to believe. See, we need to confess Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. You need to do that personally. I can't do it for you. D, you've got to decide to follow Jesus Christ as his disciple the rest of your life. So say as simple as A, B, C, D. Acknowledge your sin and your need for a Savior. Believe in Jesus, what he's done on the cross for you and who he is today. See that you confess him as your Lord, as your Savior. D, that you decide to follow Jesus the rest of your life. And that's how you receive salvation. That's how you experience this new life that comes from Jesus Christ. I want to lead us in a prayer first for that. If there's anybody here in the auditorium, anybody watching us online, if you've never received Jesus as, Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, I'm going to lead in a prayer. And I want you to just follow with me if you'd like to do that. And after that, we're going to worship God. And we're just going to pray. We're going to flow in the Spirit. Just let the Holy Spirit minister as He desires uh, this morning. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. If there's anyone, you've never received Jesus into your life. You don't know your sins are forgiven. You don't know if Jesus is in you. But you feel this morning, I need Jesus in my life. I want you to just follow with me in this prayer. You say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge my sin. I'm a sinner. I need you as my Savior. I believe you died for me. You rose up again. You are Lord. This moment, I confess you as my Savior as my Lord. And I decide to follow you the rest of my life and choose to be your disciple. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Is anyone here this morning in this auditorium for the first time you prayed a prayer like this in your life? I just want to see your hand. Anybody here, you prayed this prayer with me, and this is the first time you did that in your life. I just want you to raise your hand so we can celebrate with you. Anybody in the auditorium this morning? Okay, I don't see any hands here. Those of you online, if you did that with me for the very first time, and you want to just other, let others know, just type your name in. Let them know, I prayed that prayer. I received Jesus as my Savior, and we want to celebrate with you. We're going to take a few moments just to worship God. And I want you to pray and say, Lord, help me walk in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to live in the Spirit. Help me to walk in the Spirit. Help me to be led by the Spirit. I want to live the Spirit for life.
Why do you make that your prayer this morning before we dismiss? And then we're going to take a few moments just to pray for people and minister. I want to know you. Let your spirit overwhelm me. Let your presence overtake my heart. I want to know you. Let your spirit overwhelm me. Let your presence overtake my heart. And I want to know you. Let your spirit overwhelm me. Let your presence overtake Spirit overwhelm me, let your presence overtake my heart. Come and have your way, come and have your way. Chicago.
for a few more minutes as the Holy Spirit just minister to us as you would, as you desire. Spirit of God, we just welcome you to just minister to people as you desire this morning, God, through words of prophecy, through the gifts of healings, the workings of miracles. Even as you desire, just release your gifts and minister to people in the auditorium, minister to people or watching live, wherever they may be watching, whichever part of the world they may be watching, Lord, minister. We just welcome your presence. We welcome your work, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Benny, Roshan, just go ahead. Just feel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I just want to pray for a couple of things. Um, firstly, if, if there's anyone here, you you uh, you heard this message, but you... You feel like, uh, I, I'm so far gone, uh, I don't know if I can walk back uh, into uh, this relationship, into walking uh, in step with the Spirit. And I feel like the Lord wants to just encourage you, um, uh, you know, no matter how far you've gone, no matter what darkness you've, uh, you've stepped into, the Lord is, is going, is surely, He's surely going to bring you back. He's surely going to rest, take you into the path of restoration, into the path of salvation. Uh, and I just want to declare that, um, uh, you know, if it's one or more people, um, just want to declare that over you, uh, that the Lord leads you back. Thank you, Lord, that you will surely, surely lead them back into your way, into, your, into the everlasting way. We thank you for this, oh God. For every... Uh, doubt for every uh, every hesitation on their part, oh God. Lord, we pray that your confidence would, would fill them right now. I just declare that the presence of the Lord fill you right now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Father. Thank, Thank you. you. I also felt that uh, 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 God is reviving core family relationships. Uh, the, the hearts of uh, fathers towards uh, uh, their children you know if, if relationships have gone sour uh, uh, the hearts of fathers towards their children the, the hearts of spouses towards one another I feel like the Lord is just reviving uh, these relationships uh, and, 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 and enhancing them and I uh, just want to read a scripture 2 Corinthians 13 uh, verse 11 Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. We just want to declare that uh, over, over the families of this church, the families, uh, anyone who's watching us uh, online, God, I just declare restoration. I just declare reviving of relationships that have gone sore. I, I, I just speak the hearts of the fathers turned back to their children. The hearts of their spou of spouses turned to one another. Father, I thank you for this. Lord, I pray that the, the, the sound of rejoicing come back. Let it be revived in their tents. Let it be heard. Lord, let uh, relationships begin to flourish. Lord, let love start to flow. Uh, unconditional love. Let love uh, that is not dependent on the other person, but just dependent on who you are. Lord, on what you have poured out into them, O oh God. Let this just come out, O oh God, in Jesus' name. I thank you for this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. We bless, bless that. We bless that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, just a thing, similar lines with what Binicha was feeling. Uh, just feel like um, some of us, uh, we've lost uh, the definition of what love is because of sexual abuse. And for years, you've been thinking that that is the definition of love I and mean, if that is love I don't want love and you've built a wall around you uh, and uh, 
and uh, fa the father is here to uh, restore your innocence he is here to restore your innocence that he wants you to open up your heart to experience the true love. So would you open up your heart to him? Just bring those walls down. And let the Father restore your innocence back. Thank you for doing that, Lord. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You know, when these words are being spoken, the Holy Spirit is moving in line with those words to touch people's lives. And in those situations, to work, to do his work. So whether it's the reviving of those relationships, father to the children or between the spouses and other things that were spoken of, people who may have so walked away in the flesh think, I can't walk in the spirit. But when that word was released, the Holy Spirit is releasing his power and that so when the word is released you say Lord I receive it for me I receive it but the Holy Spirit will release his power in your life cause that to take place the same thing what Roshan shared that he that the Lord will bring you back to the place of innocence regardless of all of the uh, whatever has happened in the area of your sexuality whatever has happened that God will bring you back to that place of innocence receive that he will touch you in that area by his spirit. So Father, we just bless and we release the work of your Holy Spirit, God. Those in the auditorium, those watching, wherever they are, they could be thousands of miles away, but God, by your spirit, you're healing, you're restoring, you're delivering, you're setting people free because it is the anointing that heals the brokenhearted. It is the anointing that turns, Lord, the ashes into beauty. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke of the enemy. It is the anointing that casts off the burdens the people have been oppressed with. So, Lord, let the anointing just touch lives right here in the auditorium and out there watching by your Spirit. Right now, I just want to just want to pray for for healing. Right now, I want you if you, if you need healing in your body, just agree with me. I may or may not call out your specific condition, but that's okay. Just extend your faith right now, Lord Jesus. You are the healer, and in your name, I command sicknesses, diseases, every spirit of infirmity, uh, every yoke of the enemy of disease to leave. Specifically, right now, uh, for goiters and for growths. I'm commanding those things in the name of Jesus to disappear. In the name of Jesus. Someone maybe on, on our back, upper left back and there's a growth over there on the upper left back right there. I command that growth to disappear in the name of Jesus. Also blood related problems with this diabetic conditions and blood related problems in the name of Jesus Lord right now alter those th problems God fix them in their body or fix them in the body in the name of Jesus whatever blood related issues things that are in your body receive your healing receive your healing Lord we thank you we thank you you are the healer and we declare your healing right now in the auditorium and even through Lord, online, the internet, where people are watching, that the healing power of Jesus' name touch them and do wonders.
do miracles. Let eyes see. Let ears hear. Let the dumb speak. Let the lame arise up and walk. As in the Bible, do it today, O oh God. Do it today, as in the Bible. Jesus be Jesus today. And we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, God. Let, let paralysis just be removed and uh, let the life flow into those legs and let them rise and walk. We thank you, O oh God. Do wonders in our midst. Do wonders among your people. And we thank you, Father. And we give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. We thank you, O oh God. And we bless you. We honor you. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to close and we will dismiss. The Lord has touched you, impacted your life in any way. Please feel free to share your testimony. Just send an email to testimony at apcw.org so that we can have a record of it and also share it with others. Amen? So we're going to walk in the Spirit, aren't we? All of us. We're going to be people who live in the Spirit, who walk in the Spirit, who are led by the Spirit, who are filled with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.